Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. Wish you a happy uh, Friday. Yes, hey, happy Friday morning. Hope everyone's having a beautiful Friday out there. You made it all the way to Friday. It means absolutely nothing in cryptocurrency land because we are in a 24-7 market. But you know what? As always, wish you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest. Uh, Friday is possible from the from a very cold, a very negative eight degrees Celsius, Helsinki, Finland. Next, before we get into the charts, I want to flash a major warning across the stream. Warning, warning! If you are new to this place, if you're new to the cave, and you are offended by foul language like the f bomb and the t word and the c word and the dildo word, well, this channel might not be for you. Been getting a lot of comments recently of people, I guess, who are, who might be newer here, who were not very impressed by the language. Again, this is just my way of expressing myself. It's never intended to offend. I hope that people do get that from my overall tone, uh, not like vase. But again, if that really does offend you, this channel is probably not for you. Again, it, again, it's just my lazy way of expressing myself because I don't have a very sophisticated grasp of the English de lexicon. So again, <laughs> if that if that sounds like you, hey, it's all good. Um, and I'm going to get in the charts right here right now because we got some very important, very serious magic internet money business to get deep and dirty into right here right now. And we're going to start it out with the inverted Hagen rechart on BitMexico. And as you can see, and what I really like about this chart is that it's a very clear and very obvious consolidation phase that we're working on right here right now in fact you can see and you can very and I'm sure most people can readily uh, readily pick this up that we're working on some sort of a consolidation triangle not only do we have the shape not only do we have the size not only do we have the smell but we also have the volume characters as well down around here um, you know, I'm sure you could, I mean, you could even call, you could even consider this a uh, cup and handle the way that it's kind of getting, you know, re-accumulated on the inverted chart, which would be, you know, redistribution on the, on the regular charts uh, right over here. And a very obvious uh, resistance trend line coming in right around about where would this be? Uh, let's see, I'm having trouble visualize this guy about 35, uh, 36. Yeah, 35, 36 to the uh, to the downside right over here. So as long as Bitcoin is essentially above 35, 36, I don't really see a big breakout to be had to the downside. And as long as Bitcoin is essentially below this, you know, 4,000 descending trend line right over here, which has been governing the lower highs for the past uh, couple months. Um, really difficult to talk about like, you know, getting out of a bear market or anything like that when you're making lower highs. But again, uh, that, you know, to put in perspective, this guy's still governing price action. And overall, you know, if we were to zoom in on this guy, um, you could, you could just as easily say that, hey, as long as you're essentially be, uh, below 3690, uh, pressure is on to the downside. You do see that the 10 simple moving average represented by this red moving average right over here is starting to catch up very, very rapidly to price action. In fact, I believe that we have uh, just yeah, just just uh, just barely grazed it right now. The low of the day, or sorry, the high of the day is about thirty-eight and a half dollars. This would be coming in around forty-seven and a half, or yeah, about forty forty-eight bucks. Um, again, on BitMexico. So looking at that guy, um, you know, when this does start to catch up to price action, I would look for a. I, I really would look for a reaction. But uh, remember, this is done on a weekly total, or sorry, not a weekly, but a daily total closing basis, and it could be a very possible potential scenario where Bitcoin actually comes back and tags the twenty-one exponential. And then if it were, as long as it still closes above this area right over here, still quite bearish. So we're really, we're really in, in the midst of a decision phase right now. And I wanted to bring this up on the higher timeframes, especially on an inverted chart, because I think it's a lot easier to see, um, when things are flipped around because you know as human psychologically speaking it's just easier to see upside right it's easier to see upside so i wanted to you know kind of throw this in first and uh and just and talk about that for a second let's see if the indicators on this chart are telling us anything right now uh stokes are just crossing down fresh cross down so fair enough you know that would be a and that is on the daily so that would be a counterpoint to what i'm saying essentially uh we do have our dmi adx not giving a signal uh, at all complete consolidation right over here which is exactly what I'd be, you know, looking at this as, um, RSI over here, giving you, uh, a beautiful consolidation essentially between the neutral zone and the full bullish zone again on the inverted dildo chart. So, you know, not necessarily the most bullish thing of all time, but, uh, but Hey, uh, just, just trying to dig out every little thing right now. And also we do have the jewel over here, which is, which which is interesting to me right here now again the jewel is a the jewel is the best indicator that i know it's the best one that i've ever used and the most accurate but it's not so intuitive and what do i mean by that well what i mean by that is that it, you don't just like it's not like it's not like a like an rsi where people go people like wrongly go or sorry maybe you should use a macd which is also the wrong way to use it but we have a macd cross so you know what that means not going lower bro well 
fair enough. But uh, but on this guy right over here, there is certainly a scenario where it could pop back down to the 60 area right over here. That will be a fib, essentially. There, there's so many moving parts on this, just so you know. Um, so if it does pop back down around here, I would actually look for a bounce on that. Now, again, if this is the inverted dildo chart, that would suggest some upwards momentum. That's going to be the next big tell and what I really am looking for on a daily. Uh, all of the other indicators, they're going to snake around quite a bit. And in my experience, they just don't get it as good as a jewel. The jewel not designed really for that sort of activity to begin with, but it's still <laughs> that it, in, in my experience, when I use it like that, it actually does work. Anyways, go on to the regular charts, the in the non inverted charts right over here. And, you know, basically just the same thing upside down. Uh, overall, I am essentially bearish as long as we're below, th you know, I think this is better seen on a two day. Yeah, the, the higher time frames are the way to go right now, just because if you look at the lower time frames, you're going to be taking longs and shorts like a billion times a day and just getting hunted out. Um, Two day right over here, very clear, very, very clear. You have the M of murder, the M of death, the M of distribution, essentially, uh, right over here. And that is respected as long as we are essentially closing two day doodles below this 3690, uh, what would be a support right over here. In fact, you know what? We can just shove one in right here, right now. And there you go. You can see that so far, this has held the uh, held the green dildo party back um, ever since this uh, ever since this nice Darth Vader coming down right around here. Uh, the 10 simple moving average is starting to crawl a little bit closer to price action. We will be getting another tick on this later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Yep, the 19th. So again, uh, just another thing to be aware of. Volume characters on this guy, extremely corrective overall. This price action is screaming corrective, but remember, just because it's corrective doesn't mean you can't get a nice move up. I mean, you know, people, you know, people who are looking at it right over here. Yes, this is still corrective, but you don't want to be taking a short at 3,700 when things are going all the way to 4,200, 40, almost 4,300 right over there. And as you can see, as long as we're essentially governed by the 21 exponential moving average on this uh, on this chart on the two-day little time frame, this this yellow moving average right over here, I am bearish from a higher time frame perspective. You got the 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 two-day little death cross right over here, the green 55 or sorry, yes, the green 55 cross on the downside, the purple 200. That has been essentially the impetus for for myself taking uh, taking shorts right around that 6300 level um and essentially as long as we were expecting that 21 I, I i will maintain that posture and, and i have no reason to close that short um as a lot of people have been asking me where am i planning on on doing that well not until not until we both open and close a two-day dildo above the 21 exponential moving average you can see that it did try to close above right over here but no open and close which is which is what i look for as a confirmed kill of a moving average um so yeah, again, I'm not saying that things can't move up. They certainly can, but uh, I do want to see confirmation. I want to see proof, not promises, before before taking away uh, my overall view. Again, people will people will look at this and they'll say, "Crown, we've been going down for over a year." Don't you think it's long enough? Well, no. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend. People are saying the same thing, you know, over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. And again, right over here. Again, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And this is the very deceiving thing about these sorts of things is that it's just more likely to continue. I mean, when in doubt, I'm going to go with the former trend. It's been working for the last year. You know, it's so funny when people like say, these bears are going to wish that they, that they longed this area. Well, I mean shorts have been doing pretty well short has been the best has been the best play for the last year uh all you had it was basically like it was basically like hodlers for the three years prior to that you know all you had to do is basically just long and then wait uh lazy trading but not the worst strategy certainly not the worst strategy in an overall bro market same thing with the short side down over here you could be a lazy shorter and as long as you know you're not getting liquidated which you shouldn't i mean if, if you're if you're getting liquidated by a move like this or, or any of these moves you're over leveraged and that really is why you get these sorts of moves to get those people out of the market essentially um, but, uh, but just kind of going over that and, uh, and denoting that. Okay. So enough shit talking and over here to the three day or sorry, no, no, no. We need to talk about the actual oscillators on this time frame. So again, we will be getting another tick on the two day little time frame, uh, later tonight, 7 PM Eastern of time. I want to see the next kind of clue is going to be where the, uh, two day stokes do indeed lie. They are still gaining momentum away from each other, as you can see. So I would imagine that it's extremely unlikely that they cross up to the upside, unless we have a major, major, major move to the upside before tonight at 7 PM Eastern standard time. Very possible uh, everyone's seen crazier things happen in, in in a smaller time span no doubt about that but i'd say that going off the two-day dildo time frame which i do think gets price action a lot better especially on um 
uh, especially on a 24 seven market, uh, I would be looking for this to probably have fo uh, further follow through. Again, when the overall trend is down, I'm going to go with the overall trend until told otherwise. You also are getting rejected by the more bullish control zone right over here after snaking around a couple of times. That is a that is typically a good signal to me. Last time you did get uh, last time you got a cross to the downside on these on the two day stokes over here was actually your break of 6000. You can see beforehand, though, uh, a lot of snaking around in this area right over here, basically between the neutral and uh, in bearish control zone. And as you can see right over here, when it's getting rejected very clearly from the bullish control zone, uh, that is typically my sign. And this thing has very rarely been wrong, even on a simple cross. Now, I do have special settings on this. Um, so uh, and I do kind of keep that with regards to only the people in the technical analysis program. But uh, as you can see, th uh, this was a cross over here. This was a cross over here. Or actually, you probably can't see because my uh, my shit's in the way. But just to take uh, take take my word for it. This was another cross over here. This was another cross over here. And you don't get crosses to the upside like until you know basically until the lows. Now the crosses to the upside uh, when you're basically trading trading uh, trading counter trend, which you know the trend has been down for over a year, lower highs and lower lows. Um, when you're, when you're trading counter trend and, and you're getting those signals for counter trend, while I don't necessarily, uh, think that it's a bad signal, I, I'm, I, I do not take them. I, I look for places to close shorts, not necessarily open longs. Um, so even if we were to close, uh, you know, cross this guy to the upside, wouldn't necessarily be looking for longs overall. I have no reason to be bullish on this. Uh, again, correct to price action, lower highs for over a year. I mean, just lower highs, even in this, even in this segment down around here. Um, I don't want to go through like the full rigmarole of why I don't believe that this asset has bottomed. Uh, if you want the full rigmarole on that, go check out the hour long video titled, uh, I, well, it's I don't know what it's titled, but it's in the long term analysis playlist. It's the most recent one. It was uploaded on Sunday. I upload uh, videos to that one every every Sunday, essentially. Um, so yeah, again, lower time frames right over here. You could you know you could represent that same sort of uh, triangle that we looked at on the inverted dildo chart um, like this. However, I am a little bit less uh, I'm less hesitant to think that this is the way to do it, just because you only have one two tests on the bottom support. You really I want three to have a trend. You do have a you do have a three touch on the top side right over here. So I do like that. I do accept that. What I think is a little bit more likely and what I could go a lot more concretely off of and, um, and be a lot more comfortable talking about is basically this guy right over here. We put in a symmetrical triangle over here um, on these uh, on these last two swing highs at 4,200 and then 4,000 right over there. And that symmetrical triangle broke to the downside, broke to the downside pretty heftily on good volume. That's everything that I need to see to be demonstrative of an actual breakdown. And the measure move on this guy points all the way back to about 3,250, 3,300 to share it back basically at your former lows right in this area, which if you notice is going to be the weekly 200 simple moon average. So I do like that for good confluence. And I do think that Bitcoin is probably going to spend a lot of time be oscillating between the 200 exponential and the 200 simple moon average as well as when you have a setup like this is kind of likely. Uh, but basically the 200 simple moon average represented by the red line now um, down around uh, 3266 actually on Bitstamp. And you can see that the 200 exponential this purple line right over here governing all the highs so far. As long as Bitcoin is opening and closing uh, weekly doles below this purple uh, moving average right here, I have no interest at all whatsoever to be bullish or long or, or anything. I, I, it's not that I would be bullish. Bullish is a wrong term and people really misuse these sorts of terms. Um, bullish is really referred to as like a general trend. I like I need higher highs and higher lows. That would be good. So when I say that, I mean, I just wouldn't want to be as bearish and I probably would take a little bit of a long um, if we did both open and close again, keywords open and close above this guy right over here. Um, and then my and then kind of like my final nail in the coffin for not being bearish at all and probably looking for some long term longs or at least adding to long term longs would be getting back above the breakdown of 6000 level right over here when you spend a, a year's long worth of consolidation and break that phase to the downside. Well, if we were to get back above that area, close a higher level dildo above that area, then, you know, it, it would be a negation that phase from a technical analysis standpoint it would don't it you'd have i would have no business being short again this is not financial advice not a financial advisor but just sharing my opinion and my experience and what i've seen um work in, in my own time um anyways uh more importantly on the weekly dolo time frame and also why i do lean a little bit to the downside right here is we do have a massive well per, not not necessarily massive but uh but we do have a bearish engulfing dildo on the weekly right here uh opening higher and then closing lower last week's dildo and this week's dildo is just consolidation dildo so when you do have a bearish engulfing it's extremely likely to get followed up with some 
more on the same side of that trend. Uh, it doesn't mean it needs to be uh, immediate. In fact, you can see right here, we've spent the last six days, or sorry, five days, um, really going sideways is what it's been. It's been a pretty small range from, from 37 to 35, uh, $200, which actually, I mean, a little bit deceiving of me to say it's almost like 10% move, which is just crazy to think about like eight percent, six, uh, six or seven or 8% move. Um, but that's, you know, these are the numbers that we're dealing with right now. Obviously, Bitcoin can do that, can, can do that amount in the snap of a finger like Nicholas Martin's over there. Anyways, my point is, is that uh, while we are kind of waiting, while we are looking at these consolidations in the lower time frames, you know, with, with, an, with an understanding of the higher time frames, I am looking for this to likely be re uh, resolved to the downside. Again, I'm just going to by nature, by default, go with the former trend until told otherwise. So going back on over here to our GDAX chart, um, remember this symmetrical triangle right over here is still very much in play as long as Bitcoin is essentially below this 38. Uh, what, what was it about like 3850 breakdown area which I really do like because it also lines up very beautifully and very lovingly with this uh, Fibonacci retracement right over here from that whole uh, bull move you see the 382 coming in right over here now I have a few things to say about this because you can see on this first kind of comeback on this drop down right over here we, we basically got front ran on the 618 and the classic thing is is that when the algos pick it up there then they'll sell like the 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 236 and you actually see that perfectly right over here in fact it gets a little bit above but overall dildo bodies closing below there so I do like that we're we're getting a good read then it comes back down over here and actually overshoots the 618 and gets picked up once again usually when that happens the target for an algo will actually be the 382 Fibonacci retracement you can see that that's all over the way at, at about 3820 right around that area where to me if Bitcoin would get above there it would invalidate this symmetrical triangle right over here and probably inside a test of the overall resistance at around you know you know just below 4,000 now um so again, you know, looking at that guy, uh, it is, it, it certainly is left of center and I don't want to make it sound like Bitcoin is definitely, uh, going to break this to the downside. Of course, I'm just saying that because the overall trend is down. So for the last year, if you've been betting down the, you've been, you've been right more often than you've been wrong. Um, now here's the thing in the very low time frames we're gonna have to go to the two hour for this uh for this right here but basically we're looking at this uh what what appears to be a symmetrical triangle forming right now on uh, yeah i guess this is best shown on the two hour delta time frame right over here and the volume characters do work they kind of work out they kind of don't it's this is really fucking sloppy man um they don't uh, you know well actually how much volume do we have on this guy we had about uh 4.2 and on this guy we have about okay 3.4 okay yeah it does work out uh we actually can do this and so i'll i'll run with it until told otherwise people are calling this a diamond bottom don't be silly this this is silly it's the same people calling that a diamond bottom right over there diamond bo <laughs> oh motherfucker man motherfucker i i don't even want to get into that conversation right now i'm just sound like an autistic moron which i probably am anyways uh let's just talk about things that are like actually relevant right now and does is it is it if this is a symmetrical triangle which i believe it is we do have the right uh volume characters of it and it broke out to the upside where would that be pointing to well look at that it's actually pointed right towards this next horizontal which is what we just spoke about as essentially the 382 fibonacci retracement right over here in fact actually this the measure move actually directly lines up with that 382 funnily enough so it's it, you know as always things are a zone it's not like a static you know line it's not like we got we got to the line must turn back sometimes it works like that sometimes uh, sometimes especially in bitcoin land because boss and algorithms do rule this world as they do rule the traditional world as well it's it's just so silly that they become it's become like a meme that people just say it's just bots trading it's like a trade that fucking goes in the trade book is is real okay so that means nothing it's it's irrelevant you're just showing that you're that that you're ignorant to the fact um again very spicy today sorry guys i apologize about that i guess i'm just tired of of answering people in the uh, comments and saying yeah man i know i use some foul language it's not intended to offend you but sounds like this channel is not gonna be for you and it's like it's it's always so weird man it's it's always so weird it's like here's your free gift don't you like it <laughs> but make sure to let me know how much you hate it that's all good anyways i i, I do want you, i do want you to regale me in the comments if you do hate me uh i actually do want you and and whoever the whoever's the person who who dislikes these videos like really really fast on my live streams i'm not even mad i'm literally not even mad i just want to meet you because like how are you doing that so fast you do it like the second i put it up how 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 do you do that uh i'm just i'm i'm, I'm genuinely curious literally not even mad i'm literally not mad at all uh anyways 
if this were to break out to the downside, as symmetrical triangles certainly can, um, because, well, symmetrical triangles are like an equal opportunity social justice warrior, warrior pattern. And again, that is on the overall side of this general trend where the measure we would be pointing down towards, well, this historical support right around here at 34, 30 ish area, actually. Um, you do you can see that the 786 Fibonacci retracement is coming in around 3370. So do you get, you know, a quick wick down there and then and then buoy back up and try to hold this guy? Eh, probably, probably, I shouldn't say these sorts of things. Things. but I, if that were to happen that's probably what i'd be looking for to be honest um but again you know it, while you're in a consolidation phase like this there's no points earned by front running the own resolution of this pattern i know people are going to say well, what you don't want to you don't want a 20 dollars better entry 20 dollars better entry isn't going to help at this point in time because well if you're gunning for like 200 bucks uh from here to the upside right over here or 200 bucks to the downside i mean i I'm, I'm happy to wait and this pattern is so mature now and you can see the you can see that nice orderly drop off in volume going on over here actually which is signaling that this pattern is going to be reaching resolution relatively soon relatively soon i'd imagine that you know we probably have another spike somewhere in there and then the next one probably breaks it whichever way that that uh, that, that is um right now in the lower time frames we are above uh the 21 so i do like that on the two hour but again two hour stokes they are well they're actually still going to the upside so not bad not bad at all uh dmi ADX giving you absolutely nothing and it should not be giving you anything. That is exactly what it should be saying. Uh, what does the jewel say? What does the magical jewel say? Um, running into a little bit, typically this is a little bit of resistance here. Remember that is going to be a fib, um, but uh, not. I don't like taking trades in the middle of this guy, although actually has been pretty fucking profitable recently. Um, so fair enough. Anyways, uh, let's go to the four or sorry, that, that was a three hour. Let's go to the four hour, four hour over here. Um, do we have anything to be aware of on the four hour Four hour again, consolidation, you know, nothing, nothing to really write home about until you close like a two hour, four hour dildo above the high, uh, above the swing high over this guy right over here, accompanied by some nice volume. That would be what I'm looking for until that happens. It's just, this is all just mental masturbation, which is fun. I like mentally masturbating. I like mentally masturbating, especially with you. It's better to do with friends. And obviously the doctor says that like it keeps you healthy so it's good but um but overall you know looking at this guy right over here we technically do have a very small case of hidden bearish divergence on the four hour dildo time frame we are making lower highs also is making about a slightly higher high in the overall context of a downtrend i mean this is really splitting hairs right now i think you can actually better see it on a six hour perhaps which i'd put a little bit more weight on because the six hour is actually rejecting the 21 right here in fact uh not allowed to both open and close a six hour a little above that area um for a very long time actually ever since the ever since the move above 4,000 essentially but a little bit more pronounced on this time frame as well which is interesting right which is very interesting because you you're actually seeing things that are more obvious on the higher time frames which you should but the authors are, beco are, are becoming more um they are actually signaling more powerful things as well typically you'd see more more emotional flights on the lower time frames which is strange i i, I hope that i talked about the two-day um enough of the two-day uh stokes and then the two-day rsi giving you hidden bearish divergence which i don't believe the stock Stopped playing out just yet um so again as long as the as long as the six hours is essentially being held by this uh, uh by the 21 you know yeah uh, again i'd, I'd be kind of like looking downwards six hour stokes over here are snaking to the upside and we will get another tick on that in the next two hours and 15 minutes so well it's gonna be a lot of waiting um so again you know all all the lower time frames they're not there you can look at all the fucking indicators all the secret sauces that you can at the end of the day price action is king right now it has been for the last you know day uh, everyone looking at your oscillators is going to be is going to be trying to short this area right over here and then long this area right over here these are just hunts and i'm sure that most people have uh, especially most people in this channel have probably figured that out hourly is actually getting it better than anything you know the 200 exponential has been governing price action to the upside and then this rising trend line um governing it to the downside uh again hunts both ways when you see this guy right over here you know it's you don't want to be short after seeing a massive uh, bull wake to the upside right over uh, right over this and same thing over here you don't want to be short or sorry you don't want to be long after seeing this massive bear wick right over here I, I actually i wouldn't say so massive this is not like super massive but it was you know that uh, that was a sell it was a hunt and typically speaking after you test the resistances and you come back and test support just like after over here you test the support found the support now let's go test the resistance again uh apex on this triangle technically coming in um tomorrow Tomorrow, uh, midday tomorrow, little, yeah, about midday UTC tomorrow. Um, doesn't mean that Bitcoin has to wait all the way until that area to have a resolution. In fact, I'd say that 
probably likely to happen a day um, just because, you know, you don't want to like, I just can't imagine. I mean, like not because I can't imagine it, that that's not going to happen, but it'd be painful to imagine this going sideways for the next couple of days, like literally in this range with just more hunts. I mean, it's, it can certainly happen. No doubt about that. Don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, it, it's just like, oh my God, let's just uh, get the sandpaper out and rub my peignoir. Anyways, uh, uh, sorry, let's go back to the two day right over here. Uh, in case if I did not mention this, um, two day DMX ADX is actually giving you a sell signal. Again, we will be in a, another tick on this later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I want to see where the DMI minus is. If it ticks up, that's going to be a very likely good signal with the ADX still here. I'm going to imagine that it probably does strengthen as well. And that's also what makes me think that this thing is really, really very much on the verge of having a nice move, uh, whether it breaks the upside or downside is, you know, is a real question. Obviously my, you, you know, you, you know, my opinion, especially with regards to the overall greater trend, um, RSI over here is snaking around. I want to see if it uses the exponential as resistance or not. Uh, it was living below that area for, you know, for the past, uh, well, the, uh, yesterday, essentially, uh, since, since we got the new tech we're gonna get another one tonight if it, if it does pop back up uh, up above tonight with which which all they'll have to do is end here or higher actually by 7 p.m eastern time that could actually be a sign to say hey hold on hold all your horses and uh and you know just another kind of tick in the box of saying well you know what i think that we probably do pop back up then so again it's it, it's more of a waiting game right now uh and, and i can't stress this enough price action first about above, above everything and all else um there are a few things like from the underlying market dynamics to be aware of but let's go to gbtc first gbtc right over here still filling out this bear flag we spoke about this um on stream yesterday and uh again you know another hunt down around here in fact this is quite nasty indeed and this is this is the beauty of traditional markets but you know you can open up below this area at, just as it did and trap all the bears and then run it back up and as long as you close back above this area well still just filling out this rising channel which typically does break out to the downside more often than not statistically speaking it will but <laughs> until it actually officially breaks to the downside well you're going to be the kind of person like good old tv over there uh shorting bitcoin at uh at 6100 when it has another month of sideways to go um and there's still, and, and, and again, there's still no guarantees that things 100% do break out in the direction of that. Just because it's statistically more likely doesn't mean every single time. It's a, it's, a, it's a statistic. There is variability. There is certainly that. So again, as always, risk management, your best defense against the dark arts of hunts. Um, if things do move up over here, it actually would make sense if today did kind of fill the gap coming back from here at around $4.60, ooh, 60, 67 and a half cents. I would like that. Um, and that would actually make a lot of sense come back over here and then probably come back over. Again, that's an opinion. Um, also, it is not telling us too much. Uh, four hour stokes are just flatlined at the, well, not necessarily at the bottom, but coming down around here. Not, again, not really telling you too much. It, during trending moves, they will get stuck, uh, you know, at the top or bottom. Uh, four hour jewel. Um, this this is like a race right here. This is like a race. Uh, this this slower pinkish line. The faster that that one actually catches up, and if this and if this uh, lighter blue fails to have like one of those definitive moves up, then that will essentially force it down. Remember, this is, th these midpoints are to be taken as fib um, resistances or supports. And the way that it's currently at the, the way that it's currently angled, along with your signal in the background over here, it would be suggesting um, more down activity. But again, it's, you know, price action for us here. It's, it's so much more fucking important. Uh, $4 and 28 cents to the downside, break that area. And by closing like a two hour or four or preferably four hour deal to blow there, then I would be comfortable being overall bearish, um, you know, looking for another move down. But uh, as long as we're kind of in this range, you know, same thing as Bitcoin. You might, you know, you know, you might pop back up. You could, I mean, what if you pop all the way back up around here and fill this gap? I mean, that gap is still, still right there in your face. So, you know, as always, it's a waiting game. Price action first. Uh, just if you can, if you understand that, you'll, you'll save yourself a lot of, uh, a lot of hair pulling pain. Um, Okay, what else did we miss? Uh, do we have anything on CMEs over here? What do the CMEs do? CMEs look a little bit more healthy. Uh, well, healthy is a healthy as a is a perspective again do cmes look like a a diamond bottom guys diamond bottom forming bitcoin's going up it's like no this is not a diamond bottom like at all whatsoever where do people like pattern pattern traders are the funniest things ever it's like they're the most outspoken and they're like the most likely ones to be wrong in my experience i don't i don't know why uh i do trade some patterns but you know, the more, the more like unique the pattern, the less I want to trade it. Um, 
anyways uh over here you know still below all major moving averages 21 starting to come back down uh if it does get below this 3700 level not gonna be good not gonna be good um again looking like the the the, the weekly looks nasty i mean this is a massive bearish engulfing total on the weekly and again i do think that cmes are just easier to read uh, although you don't have like the beauty of the history as you might on um on, on exchange like bitstamp you can see very 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 easily right here just lower highs getting rejected from even like getting anywhere near the former high that's that's the advantage of looking at this sort of thing uh 12 hour you know not too much to be aware of over here again as long as you're below the 21 it's you know it's overall bearish doesn't mean you can't get above it you certainly can um but uh hey be you know just be aware uh i'd want to see i want to see proof not promises first and it's not that i, I don't even have positions right now i'm just kind of waiting i want to see which way that the sky breaks and then just kind of jump on the, uh, the general trend that's that's really what i want to be doing um okay so let's go on let's go on over here to the longs and shorts uh, first things first with the nope that is okay coin let's go to the longs over here yeah so longs are above thirty one and a half thousand open longs we've gained all the guys who let go of their positions yesterday back and once again we are in the critical zone we are certainly in the critical zone anytime that bitcoin spikes up above the thirty thousand region that does typically line up with major dumps but the timing factor of that is the missing x factor we we, we can't know that until we see like you know in, until we see just more distribution going on and perhaps it's better to even look at the shorts on the table which is right over here shorts are i think a little bit easier to read because anytime you get down into like into like the low twenty thousands, right over here right over here right over here and uh, obviously right over here but bitcoin was like you know four times the price so you don't really need as many shorts shorts um to to have the same risk profile uh you know looking at this guy it does it, it does feel like you know that is where you have major dumps lining up with and we are getting once again down into that region we are obviously not as low as over here or, or, or as over here but just to put in perspective this was your major dump in early august um i believe that was like from eight thousand down to six thousand in a span of like a fucking week or two uh and then you have this guy right over here which was your break of six thousand so you know historically speaking anytime that you get down into these critical levels it's on the radar is the better way to be thinking about it it's on the radar of oh shit oh shit bears have plenty of ammo to go and dry and this is again another one of the uh, one of the uh, another one of the underlying factors in my opinion that's just like <sighs> it is really fucking unlikely that we've seen the low what you want to see on the actual lows is you want to see major shorts being put up like these were actually major pumps right over here this was like a two or three thousand dollar pump over the span of a month right over here i believe that yeah th this was april of uh, of last year 2018 uh then over here here was your pump in august uh, in later august here is your you know in, in september and uh and all those sorts of things so be aware of these sorts of, be aware of these things also on data mesh we can see the rate the long rate the long funny rate is actually going up we've seen it we've seen it double in about uh we've seen the long funny rate double in about the last week or so it's not high or anything uh not percent is definitely not fucking high to give you an idea of what's high like not point not five percent would be high over here shorts are literally paying nothing and we have about a little over four thousand uh head shorts so really eighteen thousand um open naked Naked shorts versus thir uh, 31 and a half thousand open longs. Um, so there is certainly a nice imbalance and longs are technically paying, you know, significant more funny rate, but that's, that's, that's a deceiving statistic to even perpetuate right now. Anyways, uh, okay, so I think that covers it up for Mr. Bitcoins. Let's go check out spies. Let's go check out regular markets. And again, I, this is, I, I feel, <sighs> I hope I've been really clear in saying this. Yes, there's likely going to be a big play to be made here, but it's not yet. It's not fucking yet. Okay, if you're trying to short this with everyone else, you're probably going to get you're probably going to get what's coming to you. I don't want to sound like like an arrogant, but I just, I I hope that people are really staying safe on this. I know everyone wants to wants to get the next short on this, and yes, I do strongly believe that this one's probably going to be headed for lower lows, um, just like Bitcoin. But it's going to likely take that X factor of time. So looking at this guy, I want to see I want to see my momentum oscillators in like the two hour at least a two hour and preferably like the four hour and perhaps even the daily show some sign of divergences. We don't have that. We, you don't have any of that. Like it's gonna it's gonna spend its time grinding over here. You just got a pretty good exponential moving average cross. I mean, yeah, the volume on this is like really telling you. I mean, if you think Bitcoin's volume is corrective, this is like 
really fucking corrective. But when everyone's looking at the same thing over here, which, you know, I mean, whether you're looking at this as a head and shoulders reversal pattern, which is essentially retesting the neckline right now, which like everyone can fucking see. It's just as, it's just as, you know, it's the same, the same mentality, the same psychology as, uh, as, 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 as Bitcoin's inverted Quasimodo. Um, or if you're looking at this as, oh damn, we're at the daily 55 exponential moving average, which was, which is that what it actually, which it actually took out. And it actually did take a stab at the three, seven, seven right over here. So that is did sell off off there. Um, that is, that is interesting to me. It is it is getting more and more interesting. And, and, or whether you're looking at the weekly 100 exponential moving average, or or the 21 over here, or you're looking at the monthly 21 exponential moving average. All these things very important. But I hope that I'm very clear in saying this. It's going to take some time. Please, it's going to take some time. I just fear the messages that I've been getting that people like they'll see one thing, and I know that I'm not like it, it's 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 irrational me to think that I'm responsible for other people, but. But I just hope that I just hope that I'm not being misheard, or maybe like people just are really excited about this trade. Uh, I don't. Again, it's going to take some time. It's going to take time, just like Bitcoin. It's not happening today. It's not happening tomorrow. It's not even going to happen this week or next. Or I guess this week's almost over. But next week or the week after that, probably going to happen sometime next month. If I'm giving my full opinion on it. Again, time analysis is not something that I think can really be done. But you know, if you if you force me to give an opinion, that's what I'd say. Um, you know, monthly over here still. You know, monthly over here still signaling some down. You got your monthly stoke still uh, giving you bearish divergence and headed and headed south, getting kicked out of the more critical zone. That's typically a sign. Uh, monthly uh, DMI ADX actually giving you a fresh sell signal, which um, I'd really want to see the ADX get higher, which it's not going to get this month. It's 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 it should not get the, get higher this month. Uh, monthly jewel, which did give you a beautiful like timed you the ultimate top of this just beautifully, um, right over here on that second retest, which is the real place to be taking a position. Uh, still coming down, and I would imagine that it probably does. Um, but you know, again, these things take time. Traditional markets move at a snail's pace, so. What I, again, even on the two hour, you're probably not even getting uh, divergences there now, are you? Nope, no divergence to be had. Again, it's like everyone, like, I think a lot of people are about to learn the meaning of the saying, even if you're early, you're wrong, which is really fucking true. <laughs> it's really fucking true. Um, so, yeah, uh, again, just. <laughs> Fear, fear that uh, all you know. The next and what's probably and, and what's really probably going to happen. And again, I'm giving my giving an opinion here, which is not a good thing to do. Tentacle analysis first, opinion not even second, not even not even relevant. But you know, once you do kind of put in a local top right over here, probably pops back down to like the 257 region, or or if things get really you know nasty, back down to 251, and then reaccumulates and gives it another try, and that's going to really get a lot of people. And it's probably gonna be that second time. I, I hope I've been so fucking clear about this, man. This is this is classic shit right here. Just classic shit. Anyways, go check out the altcoins. How's Mr. Buterall doing? He has been the canary in the coal mine. A much easier chart to read than Mr. Bitcoin. And Mr. Buterall still respecting the 21 exponential as resistance. Uh, overall, Mr. Buterall does have what looks extremely similar to SPY, actually. Remember that nice head and shoulders reversal pattern. A beautiful Wyckoff tossed top of distribution right over here. Getting your first markdown on the increased sell volume. You have that very nice orderly drop off in volume as you go along and put in the second part of the, your, your neck your potential neckline right over here yes we have every piece of the puzzle in as a head and shoulders reversal pattern except for the most important one the final and or actually there's two final ones but but one and most importantly is I want to see a break on like a two hour or four hour dildo of 117 neckline of course if you're a pattern trader like that's the only time to take a trade yeah, as a pattern trader really or and I want to see that accompanied by major volume like similar to what you did like over here over here as it breaks that area, that's also going to be the 618 Fibonacci retracement. So there's going to be a lot of, you know, there's, there's a lot of activity. You can see that this 618, the bots picked it up right, right over here and right over here. But on the second pass right over here, there's t they're, they're telling you a lot about price action. This is what I was looking for on Bitcoin, where you pick it up from the 618 and then sell the 382. That's what I wanted to see for Bitcoin. We didn't quite get up that high. So I am like kind of just trying to step back in and watch and let that resolve itself while while I kind of plan for a nice uh, position whether I you know whether I end up having to take it a little bit lower or higher that's completely fine by me again trading is not about being a moon boy whether it's you know moon or doom it's it's about it's about fucking trading you know fucking trading understanding that price action uh, is is responsive it's it's flighty it's emotional and you have to be able to understand what it's doing and then respond to that and also understand when you're wrong and how to you know 
mitigate whatever damages that might incur so that statistically and over a long period of time you can be successful anyways there are there are a lot more signals in mr buterol than there are in mr bitcoin you do have the four hour dildo death death cross right over here green 55 and 200 and purple 200 you have plenty of tests on it one two i even count this as a third right over here all rejections all getting shuffled back below the 21 exponential moving average right over here that probably reminds me reminds you a lot of bitcoin's two day above above 60 uh, sorry six thousand you know when i was talking about taking that short um so as as all major moving averages kind of migrate on top of this price action and the 21 like start to harness it down that's typically the time for me to take a position in fact i would be much more com uh, comfortable taking a position of mr buterol because there's a very easy way to manage risk and again i'm not saying that this 100 percent works out but it's a good trade setup when thinking about risk and reward and essentially you know using this 21 exponential as uh, as as a place to manage risk upon as long as we're below it i'd be comfortable being short as if we get above it get the fuck out and reposition higher probably whether it you know whether it ends up being here at like 132 and a half or it ends up being here at 136 or maybe even all the way up here to 144 and a half again that is why understanding that price action you know or, or how to respond to price action is what's going to set you apart and make you successful um so yeah uh four hour uh, oscillators not telling you anything other than consolidation what about daily daily oscillators uh daily stokes just cross the upside so fair enough um there is that uh other other oscillators not really telling you too much uh daily rsi getting getting some comfortable uh awareness into the bearish control zones trying to trending well below the exponential right over there so that's not necessarily good dmi adx telling you absolutely nothing about price action jewel Jewel is doing what? I mean, Jewel is so fucking far. I mean, wow. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't look at that as that as a sign either which way. Um, weekly over here, I think pretty damn clear as well. You know, reject, uh, rejection of this area. Big big red dildo down. Darth Maul all in your face. Uh, if we put on the 10 of moving average, I'm going to guess that we have tested it already, or at least I hope we've tested it and it's rejected. Let's see. Ah, and there it is. It's revealed. As long as this weekly is below that 10 simple, I am. Uh, I would be looking. I'd certainly be looking for this to be resolved to be resolved to the downside again. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend. Look, this is this is January of last year, literally over a year ago. Lower low, lower high, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Simplify. It's the weekly. It's it's quite easy to see, and you can see right over here. Like this is not good. Again, an event-driven thing, and the event didn't even fucking happen. So it's like a double whammy. Um, I'd be very careful with that, and you know, I'd be bearish. I, I'd be looking at this, at, you know, from a bearish point of view, like a POV, <laughs> like a POV fucker. Um, as long as, uh, as long as you're essentially, I mean, really, as long as you're below 144 and a half, it's just a matter of okay, well, which resistance is gonna be, is gonna be my entry. Um, and again, doesn't mean I can't get above 144 and a half. You know, this area right over here certainly can. I just think it's very unlikely. Um, and I'd, and until then, the more the, the the better statistical setup will be looking for the shorts in my opinion um let's go over to mr rip uh mr ripples nipples over here uh 32 and a half cents mr ripples um looking looking kind of like a weak puppy over here uh, sick doggy and below all major movement averages right now uh as long as you're below this 34 points what is it 30 point 34 point 75 cent region same thing as Ripple. Uh, same thing as Mr. Bureau being below 144 and a half. Uh, don't like it. Don't like it, man. Really don't like it. Uh, daily over here. Daily below all major moving averages using the 10 simple moving average as resistance. We kind of saw the same thing on Bitcoin. In fact, let's go back to Mr. Bureau and see where he's coming in around that area. Curious. Um, oh wow, way below it. But uh, you can see that the red 10 simple and the 21 are actually gaining momentum away from each other. That's usually not a good sign either. Um, so yeah. Uh, but back on to, back on to Mr. Ripples again. The higher time frames are the key to this one, and as long as the three-day dildo time frame is death cross right over here, and we're below the 21, and we're actually well below the 21 as a 10 simple starts to migrate below this critical resistance right over here, I am bearish on this. Doesn't mean it can't be. Doesn't mean it can't turn around bullish, but I need to see proof above that area first. Uh, big support down around here, at around 30, 28 cents ish area, low 28 cents. If that area fails, then mid to high teens. Although you know that's that's well and far away. Uh, to be fair, let's go over and check out Mr. Light Cones. How's Mr. Light Cone doing? Litecoin, are you okay? Are you are you safe, Mrs. Litecoin? Have you been a good girl, or are you still respecting this area's resistance? You're still respecting that as resistance. You lazy fuck. Fails your breakout, comes back down below your proverbial neckline, which actually was an inverted head and shoulders. And now, as long as you're respecting this area's resistance, very bearish, very bearish.
Doesn't mean you can't get back above there, but look at where the 10 simple and 21 are right now. 32, 35. Look where this, look where this resistance is right here. You know, it's, it, again, I'm not saying that I can't get it back above that area. It certainly can, but I need to see proof first and foremost. Need to see, need to see, uh, need to see proof, not promises. Um, so if, if it were to close back above this area, then yeah, then, then we could talk about perhaps uh, making another run at like 37 and a half dollars. Uh, but for now, that would be what I what I'd be looking at. Um, okay, I think we talked about all that. That's necessary. Um, do we want to go a little bit deeper into Bitcoin right now? Um, you know what? Yeah, let's let's talk a little bit more about Bitcoin for a second, and then I'll let you go. Uh, probably already been a long enough video, but you know what? Why not, man? Why not? Uh, okay, so. So, 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 G GDAX chart on Mr. Bitcoins. And overall, as long as we are respecting this area right over here, again, higher time frame perspective, but this descending trend line as resistance going all the way down, what are we essentially working on? Well, we're essentially working on a descending triangle, uh, another bearish formation, just like you had above here at 6,000. You know, again, I'm sure everyone remembers this and the really annoying pattern of just basically filling this out over a long period of time. Technically, Apex coming in over here in uh, early April of 2019. But again, you know, it doesn't mean that it needs to take that long um it can certainly uh it, it, it can certainly break well beforehand in fact usually when things are about 70 69 69 percent full or more they 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 become extremely more likely to break um as you can see over here it is interesting to me that the 886 Fibonacci retracement is coming down into confluence with the measure move off this symmetrical triangle right over here which would be filling out our lower support and bitcoin actually does have uh, does actually like playing the 886 funnily enough now here's the thing while i am overall bearish while i am looking for new lows and while we did just talk about spy it's the same thing as spy while i do believe that new lows are extremely likely over a period of time it's going to likely be over a period of time it's not happening today not happening tomorrow not even ha probably not happening this month probably i mean it i wouldn't be, even be surprised if it didn't happen next month um but what i do think is likely is is new lows over time so what's the more accurate way to be going off this well uh, well, essentially waiting for the 3250 area to break, which not which is not only you know the bottom support of this ascending triangle, but also the 200 simple moving average, which we looked at at the beginning of this stream, right? Now this 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 ascending triangle would have a measure move all the way down here at around 2300 ish area. Now would that be where I'd be looking for, or does that does that line up with other things that I'm looking for for Bitcoin on a potential low? Well, actually. Actually, it does. You can see that the 886 Fibonacci retracement, again, the 886 coming into play down around here, is right around that 2300 level to, you know, 2300 to 2600. Also rounded out by these nice historical horizontal trend lines. And also we have a massive high volume or high value node coming in right around here, even bigger than what you did at the 6000 level. Uh, not only that, but the 886 Fibonacci retracement does seem to get some love in Bitcoin land. That is where you had your spike low in 2014. And also rounding out that area on the weekly total time frame is a 377, uh, the 377 uh, exponential moving average coming in right around the, t the upper end at 2600. So if things do break the th the 3250 area, which again is also going to be the, the 200 simple on the weekly, which again, I don't believe is happening anytime soon, but if and when it does, this is where I look for, this is where I look towards next. Does that mean it's going to be the ultimate bottoming zone for Bitcoin? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't guarantee anything like that. There's no guarantees. I need to see reaction first, and this is where I think many analysts get it, get it wrong. All the people saying this is definitely not going to happen, or it's definitely going this way. You're you're wrong, uh, and I can say that very sternly because I I know this to be true. I know this to be fucking true, man. You can't say stuff like that because you don't fucking know. Anyone who says that any of these areas is definitely going to happen or definitely not going to happen, you are silly and you're only deceiving yourself. And it shows a very la a very great lack of understanding in how these things actually work. When major market lows get put in, when major market cycle lows get put in, it's not because your your horizontal level was the right one or because your Fibonacci retracement told you so or because your Elliott wave said, hey, wave your money goodbye or, or any of the above. It's not for any of those reasons. It's because some big boy with extremely deep pockets came, stepped into the market and said you know what time to swing my dick bitches and i'm gonna buy up all the bitcoins that i can because this is this is my big opportunity to get as much as i can and not let anyone else get in at these prices because i'm gonna gobble all them up i can generate the most liquidity for myself so just by that sort of logic it's unlikely to actually be at the areas that everyone's talking about the area that i see people talking the least about is this 1850 area right over here which does make me think it's likely, but again, you know, it's it doesn't matter. Anywhere in this range, you know, I just want to see a reaction. If I see the reaction of what I'm looking for, of a big boy stepping in and putting in a market bottom, a market floor, that's what I need to see.
you have a great example over here in 20 uh in 2014 you know uh, you know massive massive spike in volume similar to what you did over here in your parabolic cycle uh about a 69 percent move within within like a few days and like a 100 percent move wick to wick within two weeks uh that's that's big that is that is certainly big not only that but i want to see i want to see some uh, some indicator action as well giving me some signals and what am i essentially looking for well First thing, so first I'm gonna bring up something that everyone's familiar with, the MBT signal right over here. Uh, actually, I don't wanna look at volatility today. I'll look at it, I'll look at it over the weekend, but volatility is not fucking high, I'll just tell you right now. All right, you don't need to look at it. It's not, it's not high enough to be a bottom. Uh, MBT signal over here, uh, this is not in our bottoming area. Again, this thing, this thing calls major tops and major bottoms, not market cycle tops, not market cycle bottoms, but major tops and major bottoms, which can be a market cycle top. Every market cycle top or bottom is gonna be included in this, but not every single one is going to be a market cycle top or bottom, to put it clearly, to put it bluntly. Um, so you can see over here, you actually do have an example of capitulation down around here. You actually flash the green and you do put in a nice bottom where you actually rally 100% off of over the next uh, couple of weeks all the way back to 12,000 off of 6,000. Over here, you know, you put in a major top, major top, and then, you know, down. Major top right over here, it calls 20,000. Uh, major major turnaround point right over here, actually, um, on this on this area. And more importantly, or sorry, this area is what I'm looking for, uh, the, major, the major market bottom in 2014. Now, again, I think that there are a significant amount of similarities between the price action that we're looking at right over here. Again, looking at the volume characteristics as very, 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 very corrective in relation to you know, especially in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here. And then also the area over here in 2014, this area right over here, where, you know, look at the volume characters in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here. Not only that, but coming into this area, coming into this area, we, uh, sorry, not we, but Bitcoin put in a descending triangle right over here. It breaks it to the downside. And if we're taking, you know, a percentage drawdown, it's about 52% 52% down and then bounces up from that area. Like what? Like if we go dildo body, dildo body, about 25%, something like that. If we go over here and we look at our descending triangle leading into this current action right now, well, if we do if we do a percent drawdown right, right over here, 50, oh, what's that? 53% down. Then how much do you bounce right back up to where we are about now? About 20, 24 or 25%. Very similar. Now, again, going over here to the MVT signal, which is divorced from price action, a completely different thing, completely unique thing. Um, you know, let's just let's just see if this if this lines up as well. Uh, again, looking looking very specifically uh, right at this zone right here right there all right let's see god damn it mbt come on you fuck all right so it's right over here and let's just let's just mark this area off see where it comes in around in our current price action does it line up with what we're doing right now oh my god it's like a magician it's like magic Sometimes technical analysis, it actually works. And there you go. Again, MVT signal, if you're not familiar with it, is the network value divided by the daily transaction value. So it's very interesting to me that it actually does line up with that area um, in our current structure, uh, even though it's not related to price, volume, and time. It's related, again, to the network value divided by the by, divided by the uh, divided by the daily transaction value. And then it's and then it's, uh, a moving average is put on is put on as well. Which, by the way, some people, someone's I'm sure is going to say, why don't you look at it on the weekly? Well, the reason why I don't look at on look at it on the weekly is because because of that moving averages period it's not going to make sense on a weekly especially for bitcoin it's not it's not old enough um anyways i think that's probably gonna that's probably gonna wrap it up for this morning i guess i'll just quickly go over what i'm looking for. I, I guess we talked about it earlier but i'll just quickly reiterate what i'm looking for to become unbearish not necessarily like yeah to become unbearish uh if bitcoin puts in a higher high on a daily that would be interesting but not gonna get it done uh takes out uh opens and closes a weekly dildo above the 200 exponential moving average that would be extremely interesting that would actually caused me to let go of all my short positions and probably probably even maybe start a little bit of a long like a starter position and uh and if it could close like a daily weekly above the day uh, above six thousand, the breakdown area i'd immediately become uh bullish actually so again until all those things happen i essentially lean downwards it's a question to me of where does the next big sell come in around it, are we are we basically looking at it right now does it pop back up to this area right over here do we get a full-on run at that 3850 area right over here that we spoke about the measure move off this symmetrical triangle if it breaks up to the upside maybe maybe it's another tap of the resistance right over here at four thousand Again, um, a little bit of a waiting game to be continued. So I'll be back on later with some live stream action. Hopefully we get some new price action by then. Looking forward to see you there. As always, wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest. Friday is possible and uh, see you soon.